Have you ever had religious impulses, Lord Russell? Oh, yes. When I was adolescent, I was deeply religious. I was more interested in religion than in anything else, except perhaps mathematics. And uh, being interested in religion led me, which it doesn't seem often to do, to look into the question whether there was reason to believe it. I took up three questions. It seemed to me that God and immortality and free will were the three most essential questions. And I examined these one by one in the reverse order, beginning with free will. And gradually I came to the conclusion that there was no reason to believe any of these. And that uh, I thought I was going to be very disappointed but oddly enough, I wasn't. But how did you come to convince yourself there was no reason to believe in any of these three things? Well, uh, over free will, I think the argument was not a valid one. Uh, and I don't any longer think it was at all conclusive. But I thought that because I thought that uh, all the motions of matter are uh, determined by the laws of dynamics and the motion of a man's lips when he speaks must be so determined so that he can have no control over what he's going to say. I don't think that was a valid argument, but that convinced me at that time. About immortality, well, it seemed to me quite clear that uh, the relation of body and mind, whatever it may be, is much more intimate than is commonly supposed. And uh, that... Uh, there's no reason to think that uh, a mind persists when a brain decays. And as for God, well, there are a great many arguments that have been advanced in favor of the existence of God. And uh, one and all, I thought, and still think, that they're invalid, and that nobody would have accepted such arguments if they hadn't wanted to believe the conclusion. Do you think that it is certain that there is no such thing as God, or simply that it is not proven? I don't think it is certain that there is no such thing. No. I think uh, that it is on exactly the same level as the Olympic gods or the Norwegian gods. They also may exist. The gods of Olympus and the gods of Valhalla. I can't prove they don't. But I think the Christian God has no more likelihood than they have. I think there are bare possibility. Do you think that religion is good or harmful in its effects? I think most of its effects in history have been harmful. Not all. Uh, religion uh, caused the Egyptian priests to uh, fix the calendar and uh, to note the occurrence of eclipses so well that in time they were able to predict them. I think those were beneficial effects of religion. But I think the great majority have been bad, and I think they've been bad because it was held important that people should believe something for which there did not exist good evidence. And that falsified everybody's thinking, falsified systems of education, and set up also what I think a complete moral heresy, namely that it is right to believe certain things and wrong to believe certain others, apart from the question whether the things in question are true or false. But do you mean there's a kind of censorship of thought that goes on, which prevents free thinking? I do, yes. I mean, uh, if you take uh, practically any school in the world, uh, any... Uh, school for boys and girls, you will find that a certain kind of belief is taught. It's one sort in Christian countries and another in communist countries. But in both, something is taught. And the evidence for what is taught is not impartially examined. And the children are not encouraged to find out what there is to say on the other side. What is it that makes man, over the centuries, demand a religion? I think mainly fear. 
man feels himself rather powerless, there are three things that cause him fear. One is what nature can do to him. It can strike him by lightning or swallow him up in an earthquake. One is what other men can do, which is that they can kill him in war. And the third, which has a great deal to do with religion, is what his own violent passions may lead him to do. The things which he knows in a calm moment he would regret having done. And for that reason, most people have a great deal of fear in their lives. And religion helps them to be not so frightened by these fears. But, but the founders of religions, I say religions in the plural, have very little to do with what their followers teach. Very little indeed. I uh, would like to take an illustration. I've uh, found that uh, uh, military men in this country uh, think that uh, Christian belief is uh, very important in uh, the contest with uh, Eastern powers. And uh, they think that uh, if you're not a Christian, you won't be so vigorous about it. Well, uh, I read the Sermon on the Mount over again, and I couldn't find a word in it to encourage H-bombs, not a word. Much of what you're criticizing happened a long time ago, but what about today? Oh, no, it's just the same today. Uh, this illustration I gave you about the H-bombs is certainly not antiquated yet. I wish it were. And I think that at this present day, uh, religion, as embodied in the churches, in the main, uh, discourages honest thinking and uh, gives importance to things that are not very important. Its sense of importance seems to be quite wrong. Now, when uh, the Roman Empire was falling, the fathers of the church didn't bother much with the fall of the Roman Empire. What they bothered with was how to preserve virginity. That was what they thought important. Well, now... What did they do about that? Sir? Well, they exhorted people and uh, uh, didn't bother about you uh, seeing that the armies held the frontiers or anything like that, or that the taxation system was reformed. Uh, they were uh, occupied in founding monasteries and nunneries and so forth and thought that far more important than preserving the empire. Well, so in the present day, when uh, the human race is falling, I find uh, that uh, eminent divines think uh, that uh, it's much more important to prevent artificial insemination uh, than it is to uh, prevent uh, the kind of world war that will exterminate the whole lot of us. And that seems to me to show a lack of sense of proportion. Yes, wouldn't you agree, though, that many organized religions have done a tremendous amount of good in spreading education where perhaps no other system has been available, as in Burma, say, where the monks have done a tremendous amount of educating the poor, where there aren't any organized schools? Well, I think it's possible, yes, and I, I think the, the Benedictines did a certain amount of good in that way, but only after doing the harm. They first did a great deal of harm, and then a little good. But, but what about people, though, who feel that they must have some faith in a religion, otherwise they can't face their life at all? Well, well I take that away. I say people who feel that are really... Uh, well, uh, they're showing a kind of cowardice which in any other sphere would be considered contemptible. But when it's in the religious sphere, it's thought admirable. And I can't admire cowardice, whatever sphere it's in. Now, take uh, the whole uh, question of the uh, very dangerous condition that the world is in. Uh, I get letters constantly from people saying, oh, God will look after it. But he never has in the past. I don't know why they should think he will in the future. You we think this is a very unwise doctrine to follow. It ought to be self-help rather than depending on somebody else to do it for you. Certainly, yes. But then if, though, a religion is harmful, and yet man has always insisted on having one, what is the answer? Oh, man hasn't. Uh, some men have, and those are the men who are used to it. Uh, in countries in the land, for instance, people walk on stilts, 
and they don't like walking without stilts. And religion is just the same thing. Some countries have got accustomed to it. But uh, now, I spent a year in China, and I found that the ordinary, average Chinese had no religion whatsoever. And uh, they were just as happy, I think, given their bad circumstances, happier than most Christians would have been. But I think a Christian would say that if he could convert them into being Christians, they'd be much happier. Well, I don't think that's borne out by the evidence at all. Yes, but now, doesn't man rather search for some cause or faith outside himself, which appears to be bigger than himself, not merely a question of cowardice or leaning on it, but also wanting to do something for it? Well, but there are plenty of things bigger than oneself. I mean, uh, from you start... Uh, first of all, there's your family, then there's your nation, then there's mankind in general. And those are all bigger than oneself and are uh, quite sufficient to occupy any genuine feelings of benevolence that a man may have. Do you think that organized religion is going to go on having the same grip on mankind? I think it depends entirely upon whether people solve their social problems or not. I think that uh, if there go on being great wars and great oppressions and uh, many people leading very unhappy lives, probably religion will go on because I've observed that uh, the belief in the goodness of God is inversely proportional to the evidence. When there's no evidence for it at all, people believe it. And when things are going well and you might believe it, they don't. So I think that if uh, people solve their social problems, religion will die out. But on the other hand, if they don't, I don't think it will. Now, you can get illustrations of that in the past. In the 18th century, when things were quiet, a great many educated people were free thinkers. Well, then came the French Revolution, and certainly English aristocrats came to the conclusion that uh, free thought led to the guillotine, and so they dropped it and they all became deeply religious, and you got Victorianism. And uh, the same thing again happened with the Russian Revolution. The Russian Revolution terrified people, and they thought uh, that uh, unless they believed in God, their property would be confiscated. And so they believed in him. And so that I think you'll find that uh, these social upheavals are very good for religion. But do you think that you and I are going to be just snuffed out completely when we die? Certainly, yes. I don't see why... What I mean, I know that the body disintegrates, and uh, I think that uh, there's no reason whatever to suppose that uh, the mind goes on when the body is disintegrated.